100 of the greatest sci-fi movies as told to you by me, your boy Seed, your trusty Stuart in all things Paprika, man. What's going on with you, man? Uh, we're here. We're back to talk about yet another of these 100 sci-fi bits of business, man. We're doing uh, one a day for the first 100 days of 2022, keeping your year rolling right along. Man, we're all up into February's now. Uh, hopefully, that damn groundhog did us some good. <laughs> but likely not, man. Yesterday, yesterday we talked about number 69. Nice. Uh, yesterday's 69 was Return of the Jedi, and not knowing how those comments have gone, I can assure you, probably not in my favor. <laughs> man, go back and listen to the Return of the Jedi episode. If you haven't, man, go back and watch a movie if you haven't. It's been uh, quite a while since I've even had an inclination to watch it. Like, even on May 4th, there was like, Star Wars everything. Like, back in the days when all you had was three movies. Like, yeah, I guess I'll watch Star Wars and Byron Jedi. And now I got options. I got options. I guess, what, like 11, 12 Star Wars movies now? So I can pick and choose. And very rarely do I go back to Return of the Jedi, man. But go ahead and check that bad boy out. Today, today, we're talking about number 68 on this here list. Deja Vu. Mm. As directed by uh, your boy Tony Scott, man. Rest in peace, to Tony Scott. Tony Scott and Denzel Washington made a couple of movies together, man. It's like, like, uh, like Ridley Scott's got his go-to cats, man, and Tony Scott has his go-to cats. And this one, uh, Denzel was definitely a good go-to for Tony Scott. If you think it's just a feeling, go back and look again. Which, okay, all right, like an okay tagline, but in the uh, in the context of the movie, it bumps it up a little bit. Called in to recover evidence in the aftermath of a horrific explosion on a New Orleans ferry, federal agent Doug Carlin gets pulled away from the scene and taken to a top secret government lab that uses a time shifting surveillance device to help prevent crime. Um, this one was kind of dope, man. I went back and I rewatched this the other day in preparation for for this this here episode, and it's better than i remember it being slightly uh like this is like denzel like in middle of a legendary denzel run it kind of starts with training day and i think uh it ends maybe somewhere around here like i think he has like he's got like john q man on fire deja vu like that was that whole run right there that was like prime denzel right there like now don't don't, don't get me wrong he's still killing the man Macbeth was that business too shout out to uh to the, the tragedy of Beth on Apple TV right now, blink. But yeah, this story, man, it was like it was Denzel going full Denzel. Like it's the science fiction of this doesn't even come in until the movie's like <laughs> like a third of the way through. Like the whole first act is a straight crime, who done it type deal. Like a, a ferry, a New Orleans ferry full of uh, military people. Partying, why they're partying, we never quite find out, but who cares? Out there partying, and the entire ferry fucking blows up and just kills everybody. And it's like, yo, that's a wild start to a movie. And you think it's just going to be, uh, you know, just de- a- another standard Denzel crime joint, and it is anything but, man. And it kind of proceeds as that for a little bit until Val Kilmer comes onto the scene, uh, you know, and his ragtag group of people, uh, Maxine from In Living Single, <laughs> and your boy Foggy Nelson from the Daredevil joints, He's, and the uh, the Hebrew Hammer as well. Very eclectic team of people we got there. And they're like, hey, we got this bit of business that can let us, let us look a little bit into the past. And then, you know, there's secrets. And they're, they're, they're not telling Denzel a full truth, and Denzel's going to go full Denzel on before they can realize what the truth is. Um, and yeah, and it becomes like kind of like a time travel movie without fully being, I guess it is a time travel-ish type movie. Paula Patton being one of our main anchors of this movie as well. It's kind of like the Paula Denzel team up to try to stop uh, uh, Jesus. <laughs> Jim Caviezel as our bad guy until we find out that in real life Jim Caviezel is a bad guy and yeah it's it's a good sci-fi thriller if I had to uh, throw a label on it if you have not checked out Deja Vu you are uh, you're doing yourself a disservice man or if it's been a while since you checked out Deja Vu I would encourage you to do thusly because the shit still slaps man and that's it for number 68 on this list Deja Vu
We'll be back in 24 of the hours, man, to talk more sci-fi. What's going to be number 67? You will have to figure it out tomorrow right here on Paprika.